What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're going to be going over the various activities that you can do on Ryza during the summer event. There are a bunch of activities on Ryza that you can participate in in order to grind lol hot favors. Lol hot, lol nut, lol nut, I don't know, however you pronounce it. These things. Some of these activities are pretty straightforward, some of them less so, so I'm going to go over each one and the best way to get through them. We'll start with the easiest one, Flying High. Simply go up to the event coordinator, who is just off to the right of the beam-in point of the Ryza Resort, and accept the mission, Flying High. To participate in this mission, you will need to have a floater, which is a device that allows you to fly around the Ryza map. If you do not have one of these, there is a vendor near the event coordinator that sells them. Most of them do cost Loha favors, but if you're new to the Ryza event, you'll have to go with the rental option which is a single-use floater that will cost 1,000 EC. Once you have your floater and have accepted the Flying High mission, all you have to do is activate your floater. Then four flight courses will appear for you across the Ryza map. There are a number of possible courses that you can get, which ones you get will be completely random. To complete Flying High, all you have to do is fly through three of these four courses. I don't know why it gives you four, but only requires three, but that's just how it is. There isn't even a bonus for doing the fourth one. It disappears after you've completed the first three. Anyway, just do the three closest ones, which you can determine by your minimap, and then return to the event coordinator, which you can do easily by beaming back to the resort, and turn in your mission. This is a quick and easy mission that you can do whenever you want because it's not on the event timer, so it's a great option for getting your daily done to earn progress to unlocking the new summer event ship. This one is also useful for your Loha grind too, because Flying High rewards 50 Loha favors, but only has a 15 minute cooldown. So you can keep getting that 50 Loha reward throughout the day with this mission. I'll often do one of these in between summer event activities, because sometimes you finish one and the timer won't be done on it for several minutes. Plenty of time to get a quick flying high in. This next one is really easy to do too, Horgon Hunt. This is one of the timed events on Ryza. In fact, all of the rest of the activities I talk about with the exception of the last one will also be timed events. Like with flying high, you will also need a floater for Horgon Hunt. Technically it's not a requirement, but trust me, you're going to want one because you're going to be flying all over the island for this thing. Well, not all over the island, but the more distance you can cover the better. During the Horgon Hunt, you can accept a mission of the same name, which will require you to find 10 of the multiple Horgons that will be placed across the map. Horgon Hunt has the potential to reward roughly 100 Loha favors, and that's just per completion. The nice thing about Horgon Hunt is you can pick it up whenever you want during that 16 minute time period that it's up. So you can complete a run of it on one character and then move on to another character and do it again, and again and again and however many you can do within that 16 minute time period. With an impulsive floater, a rise of triple, and following the right course, you should be able to get five or six characters through this before the time runs out. Member of the Stowe community, Kwolves, has actually recently put out a video on the best route to take for Horgon Hunt. I'll link that down in the description below. This method can become the best way to grinding low hop favors, but it does require a lot of initial grinding because you're going to need to get impulsive floaters on at least five to six characters, which are a thousand favors each, plus another five for the triple that gives the favor speed buff. So this isn't something you're going to be doing a lot of if you're new to the summer event, but it's worth building toward to make future grinding that much easier. This next one is going to be the easiest one for beginners, the dance party. It doesn't need a floater or a power board, and it's relatively close to the beaming point. When the dance party is starting, all you have to do is head to the dance floor by the hotel, then click I want to dance when it begins. From there, it's just a matter of doing the dances that the dance instructor calls out. These are done in the form of character emotes. What I usually do is open up the emote menu and pin it to my UI. All the dance emotes are grouped together and listed in alphabetical order so they're easy to find. You'll earn favors from the dance party in four parts. You'll get your first 10 after doing the first dance, another 15 after completing the next 5, another 25 favors after the next 10 dances, and a final reward of 50 favors after another 20 dances. There's also a chance to get a choo-choo dance, which can randomly drop during any of the dance parties. There's only a small chance it'll even happen during a dance party, but if it does, that's another 100 loha favors. Once you've finished that last set of 20 dancers, there's really no reason to stick around. So I'd go off and do a quick flying high while waiting for the next event to start up. The next one I'll go over is the Power Board Race, which is one of the more difficult ones because it's a PvP event. Like the name suggests, you will need a Power Board for this. A Power Board is... well, remember the hoverboards from Back to the Future 2? It's one of those, but it actually works on water. In fact, it only works on water. It's basically a floating surfboard. You can get these from the Summer Event Vendor, the faster they are, the more expensive they'll be. The fastest ones, the Impulsive Power Boards, are going to be 1500 Lohat. Though some still prefer the Superior Boards. While the Impulsive Boards are faster, they have a really bad turn rate, which makes them really difficult to handle. The Superior Boards are a bit slower, but they are easier to handle, which could be an edge depending on who you're racing. If you're new to the Summer Event, there is a particular Power Board I would recommend getting, and it's not from the Summer Event Vendor. 
In the Phoenix Prize Store, under the Very Rare tab, you can find the Ryza Mini Power Board Future Flyer. This has equivalent stats to a superior power board. So instead of grinding out a thousand Loha favors, just spend some Dilithium on some Phoenix Prize Packs. It really isn't that difficult to get a Very Rare token, which makes this a really great starter board. For the actual race, all you gotta do is beam to the race start point when the event starts, hit join race when you're there, follow the course, and try not to screw it up. Quick tip, if you haven't figured this one out already, I would recommend steering with your mouse. So hold down your right mouse button and do your steering with that. As long as you finish the race without getting disqualified, you'll earn some amount of favors. Though you'll earn more favors if you place in the top three. The next one is the Biathlon, which is very similar to the Power Board race. It follows a different course, but the first part functions exactly the same way as the Power Board race. However, roughly three quarters of the way through, the race turns to land, where you'll have to switch from your power board to your floater. So for this one, you're going to need a fast board and a fast floater. There's really not much else to say on this one, but I will mention one thing about the course. Be careful on that last bend before you get to the land portion. On an impulsive board, it is very easy to launch yourself off the course and therefore disqualify yourself. So I'll often turn off the board in the middle of the turn. So turn it off, point yourself in the right direction, then turn it back on, and then get ready to switch to your floater. The floater potion is pretty easy, it's pretty much a cakewalk from there. Next is the last of the timed events and is by far my least favorite, Sovak's Artifact Scavenger Hunt. When this event starts, simply contact Sovak and accept the mission Sun, Sand, and Scavenging. This can be a little confusing setting up. You'll need to initialize the scanner, but you won't be able to actually scan for the artifact until you move a bit. I don't know why it doesn't give you a direction on the first initialization scan, but whatever. One of the reasons why I dislike the scavenger hunt so much is because the scanner is very imprecise. It indicates the direction of the artifact in a cone, which gets exponentially bigger the further away you are from the artifact. And sometimes the scanner just doesn't work. I've seen this thing glitch out before and just point in a completely incorrect direction. Adding to the frustrations with the scanner, it only works when you're on the ground. So if you're on a floater, you're gonna have to land first before you use your scanner, because the scanner graphic will not show up while you're in the air. Which, by the way, if you're going to do the scavenger hunt, you're probably going to want a floater. The artifact spawn points are all over the island, you're going to want to be able to cover some distance pretty easily. The artifact's location will be random each time you play this, but there are only a set number of spawn points for it, so knowing where those spawn points are do make it easier to track down the artifact. I'll include a link to a map for these spawn points in the description. Once you finally found the artifact, all you have to do is go back to Sovak's camp and turn the artifact into him, where he will give you 50 Loha favors. Honestly, for the amount of time it takes to do the scavenger hunt, 50 Loha favors really does not feel worth it, so I usually end up passing on this one during the event rotation. I should also note that the scavenger hunt isn't technically a timed event. You can do the scavenger hunt whenever you want, it's just the bonus rewards for it that are part of the timed event. But like I said, I already think the scavenger hunt isn't worth doing for 50 favors, so how do you think I feel about doing it for 25? Sovak's probably out here grumbling about how no one wants to work anymore. No, Sovak, you're just too cheap to work for. Anyway, while that is the last of the timed events, there is still one more activity to do on Ryza. The Sandcastle Building Contest. This one used to be in the event rotation cycle, I don't know why they took it out, but it is still playable, and does still give out favors. You can find the contact for the mission over by the promenade. Talk to him, and then go find a spot to build your castle. There are a bunch of spots with little shovels and pails along that beach. They'll start glowing when you accept the mission. The one you pick is where you'll build your castle. Basically, it's a bunch of short fetch quests. Go get some wet sand, go get some dry sand, go get some sticks. Which one you get will depend on the kind of castle you're building, there are a number of structural options, but it's all on or near the beach, just look for the glowing stuff. At some point you'll have to do something to prevent the destruction of your sand castle while it's into construction, like collecting more sticks so it doesn't collapse, or fending off wild monkeys. Once you complete your castle, you'll be able to turn it in for 25 loha favors. It's not a lot, but the sand castle still takes less effort and less time than the scavenger hunt, so I like this more. And the only reason you don't get 50 is because there's no bonus rewards time for this one anymore. Also, there are some accolades connected to the sand castles, so if you're someone who cares about accolades, this could be worth doing. So yeah, those are the various activities available to do on Ryza during the summer event. I hope this guide helps. If you have any other questions about the summer event, or a way to do any of these activities better than I showed, please let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button, and maybe hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, feel free to hit the join button and become a member. Either way, thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.